This free step-by-step -step video comes to you directly from Haynes, creators of the world's best repair manuals. Fix your car or truck the right way with our accurate and reliable information at your side. You can complete more than 200 jobs on this vehicle when you purchase the complete online manual at Haynes.com. Fluid level checks. Pull the hood release lever located above the driver's side kick panel. Lift the hood safety latch, then raise the hood upwards. Brake fluid level. The brake master cylinder is mounted on the front of the power booster unit in the engine compartment. The fluid level should be maintained between the max and min lines marked on the side of the reservoir. If the fluid is low, wipe the top of the reservoir and cap with a clean rag to prevent contamination of the system when the cap is unscrewed. Unscrew the cap from the brake fluid reservoir. While the reservoir cap is off, check the fluid in the reservoir for contamination. If rust deposits, dirt particles, or water droplets are present, the system should be properly drained and refilled. Top up the reservoir with a specified type of new brake fluid until the fluid reaches the max line. After filling the reservoir to the proper level, install the cap and make sure the cap is fully seated to prevent fluid leakage or contamination. Engine oil level. Pull the dipstick out of the tube and wipe all of the oil away from the end with a clean rag or paper towel. Insert the clean dipstick all the way back into the tube and pull it out again. Note the oil at the end of the dipstick. The level should be between the L and H marks. To add oil, unscrew the oil filler cap and pour in the correct type of oil. Use a funnel to prevent oil spills. After adding oil, wait a few minutes to allow the level to stabilize. Then pull out the dipstick and check the level again. Add more oil if required until it reaches the H mark. Do not overfill the engine. Insert the dipstick and install the filler cap, tightening it by hand only. Coolant level. A white plastic coolant reservoir is located at the front of the engine compartment and is connected by a hose to the base of the radiator cap. The coolant level will vary with the temperature of the engine. When the engine is cold, the coolant level should be slightly above the min mark on the reservoir. Once the engine has warmed up, the coolant level should be at or near the max mark. If the level falls below the min line, Allow the fluid in the tank to cool, then remove the cap from the tank and add the correct type and mixture of coolant to bring the level back up to the min line with a cold engine. If only a small amount of coolant is required to bring the system up to the proper level, water can be used. However, repeated additions of water will dilute the antifreeze and water solution. Install the reservoir cap securely. If it is necessary to remove the radiator cap, wait until the engine has cooled completely, then slowly turn it to the first stop. If coolant or steam escapes, or if you hear a hissing noise, let the engine cool down longer, then remove the cap. The coolant should be at the base of the radiator filler neck. Drive the vehicle, then recheck the coolant level.
automatic CVT transaxle fluid level. With the engine still idling, locate the automatic transaxle dipstick in the engine compartment. Release and remove the dipstick from the tube, wipe it off with a clean rag, then push it all the way back into the tube until the cap seats. Pull the dipstick out again and note the fluid level. The level should be in the hatched area up to the upper notch with the transaxle at normal operating temperature. If additional fluid is required, pour the specified fluid directly into the tube using a funnel. Do not overfill the transaxle. Never allow the fluid level to go above the upper end of the cross-hatched area on the dipstick. It could cause internal transaxle damage. Prevent overfilling by adding fluid a little at a time, shifting the selector lever through all gear ranges between additions, and checking the level until it is correct. Insert the dipstick fully into the tube, making sure it locks into place. Turn off the engine. Differential lubricant level check, all wheel drive models. Chalk the front wheels to prevent the vehicle from rolling. Then raise the rear of the car and support it on jack stands. The vehicle should be as level as possible to ensure an accurate check. Remove the differential fill plug. The lubricant should be up to the bottom of the filler hole. If not, use a pump or squeeze bottle to add the specified lubricant until it just starts to run out of the hole. Clean and reinstall the fill plug using a new sealing washer. Tighten the fill plug to the specified torque setting. Lower the car to the ground. Unblock the wheels. Transfer case lubricant level check. All wheel drive models. Apply the handbrake. Chalk the rear wheels to prevent the vehicle from rolling. Then raise the front of the car and support it on jack stands. The vehicle should be as level as possible to ensure an accurate check. Remove the plug from the filler hole in the transfer case. The lubricant should be up to the top of the bottom of the filler hole. If not, use a pump or squeeze bottle to add the specified lubricant until it just starts to run out of the hole. Clean and reinstall the fill plug using a new sealing washer. Tighten the fill plug to the specified torque setting. Lower the car to the ground. Unblock the wheels. Windshield washer fluid level. The fluid for the windshield and rear window washer system is stored in a plastic reservoir. The reservoir level should be maintained just below the bottom of the filler neck. The reservoir is accessible after opening the hood and is located on the right front side of the engine compartment. Flip open the cap and fill the windshield washer reservoir as necessary. Push the cap securely onto the opening when finished.